Sir Handel had been naughty. So the fat controller made him stay in the shed for a while. Peter Sam was now busier than ever. He had to do Sir Handel's work as well as his own. He was very excited, and the fireman found him hard to handle. Anyone would think that he wanted to work, said Sir Handel, who was lonely and bored. All respectable engines do, replied Scarlowey. Keep calm, Peter Sam, and you'll do well. But Peter Sam was in such a state that he couldn't listen. He collected some coaches and went on his way. But somehow, the faster he wanted to go, the slower the journey became. When Peter Sam finally fussed into the station, Henry was already there. This won't do, youngster, said Henry. I can't be kept waiting. If you are late tonight, I'll go off and leave your passengers behind. Pa, said Peter Sam. Secretly, he was a little worried, but not for long. The guard blew his whistle and waved his green flag. Peter Sam puffed happily away, singing a little song. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. What fun it all is, he thought as he journeyed along the line. The coaches enjoyed themselves too. They were growing fond of Peter Sam. Every afternoon they had to wait an hour at the station by the lake. The station has a little shop selling refreshments. The driver, fireman and the guard buy tea and cakes from the refreshment lady. At last, the waiting was over and Peter Sam was sizzling with impatience. Beep! Hurry up, please! He whistled to the passengers. How awful, he thought, if we miss Henry's train. The guard was ready with his flag and whistle. The refreshment lady was making her way to the train. Then it happened. The guard says that Peter Sam was too impatient. Peter Sam says he was sure he heard a whistle anyway. He started. Stop, 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 wailed the coaches. You've left the refreshment lady behind. Bother, groaned Peter Sam. We're sure to miss Henry now. The refreshment lady climbed aboard and they started again. Peter Sam didn't sing anymore. Instead, he hurried along the line as fast as his wheels and his driver would let him. They arrived at the big station just in time. Hooray! said Peter Sam. He felt very relieved. Not bad, youngster, said Henry loftily. But the refreshment lady was still cross. What do you mean by leaving me behind? I'm sorry, refreshment lady, replied Peter Sam. But Henry said he might leave without us. Then the refreshment lady laughed. You silly engine, Henry was teasing you. He wouldn't have gone without our passengers. He's a guaranteed connection. Well, said Peter Sam, where's that Henry? But Henry had chortled away. Every day where the little engines work, the crisp air is suddenly filled with a familiar noise. The lakes and mountains have many visitors, and Harold the helicopter flies the sky making sure that no one is in trouble. All present and correct, time to return to base. Then Harold noticed something. 
a sturdy diesel was coming round the mountainside. Harold flew lower for a closer inspection. I'm Harold. Who are you? I'm Rusty, replied the diesel. Don't recall seeing you before. What brings you this way? The fat controller sent me to help the other engines, huffed Rusty. This was no time for a chap with a helicopter. Well done. Cheers and keep up the good work. Chicky chopper, muttered Rusty. Not long now, encouraged the driver. We'll soon be at the top station. Peter, Sam and Sir Handel were glad to see Rusty. Even so, Sir Handel wouldn't stop grumbling. The trucks didn't like Sir Handel and wanted to play tricks on him. No one understands our feelings, sympathised Gordon. Now, if you were ill, you couldn't shun trucks, could you? Good idea, replied Sir Handel. I'll try him. He did so next morning. I don't feel well, he groaned. There wasn't time to examine him, so some of his trucks were coupled behind Peter Sam's coaches. Rusty promised to follow with the rest. Peter Sam didn't mind the extra work. He left his coaches at the station and trundled cheerfully on. Soon, they reached the quarry where the trucks were needed. Empty trucks at the bottom of the slope are hitched to a steel rope. Loaded ones at the top are hitched to another. By their weight, loaded trucks run down the steep slope pulling the empty ones up. Peter Sam duly waited at the bottom of the slope for the loaded trucks. He never bumped trucks unless they misbehaved. But the loaded trucks couldn't see him properly. They thought he was a handle. The chance for trickery had come. Faster! Faster, they yelled. No, no, wailed the empty trucks. It's Peter Sam. But it was no use. Hurrah, hurrah, roared the trucks. Peter Sam shut his eyes. Wailed Peter Sam. Rusty was working nearby and came to help clear up the mess. Boss, my buffers, exclaimed Rusty. Never mind, Peter Sam, we'll get you out. Peter Sam felt battered. His funnel was cracked and his boiler dented. Thank you, Rusty, he sighed and limped slowly home. I'm sorry about your accident, said Sir Handel. I always stand well back. Trucks don't like me. Why didn't you warn me? I didn't think. You never do. You can start thinking now while you're doing Peter Sam's work as well as your own. That'll teach you to pretend you are ill. Sir Handel did start thinking about Gordon. When the wreckage was cleared away, Rusty set off along the line. Splendid to see you again, whizzed Harold. I'm completing my evening's lookabout. Well done, replied Rusty. Keep up the good work. And the little diesel purred back home. Scarlowey had been to the works to be mended. He felt much better. Rusty the diesel was helping him off his truck. Scarlowey hadn't met the little diesel before. Rusty seems a kindly sort of engine, he thought to himself. I help to mend the line and do odd jobs, explained Rusty. I hear everyone is looking forward to seeing you again. Come on. Peter Sam was feeling depressed. He was still getting over his accident, but he wanted to start work again. The fat controller wouldn't let him. Another day's rest will do you good, he said. Besides, I've got a surprise for you. For me, sir? How nice, sir. What is it, sir? Wait and see. 
the surprise was Scar Lowy. Oh, said Peter Sam, I'm glad you've come home. They lit Scar Lowy's fire and he sizzled happily. I feel all excited, he said, just like a young engine. Now, tell me all the news. I see you've met Rusty, said Peter Sam. Yes, I like that diesel. So do I, replied Peter Sam. It's a pity Duncan doesn't. Who is Duncan? He came as a spare engine after my accident, replied Peter Sam. Is he useful? He keeps busy and I'm sure he means well, but he's bouncy and rude. He sings and sways and swivels around. His driver calls it rock and roll. I understand, said Scarlowy gravely. His driver interrupted. Duncan has done it again. He's stuck in a tunnel. Come on, old boy. We'll have to get him out. Scar Lowy was pleased. He wanted to run and look forward to meeting Duncan. They found the guards van and some workmen and hurried up the line. How nice and smooth the rails are, thought Scar Lowy. They've mended all the old bumps. The little diesel helped do that. What a difference Rusty's made to the line. Quite soon they found Duncan. He was stuck at the far end of the tunnel and he was very cross. I'm a plain blunt engine, our speakers are fine. Tunnels should be tunnels and not rabbit holes. This railway is no good at all. Don't be silly, snapped his driver. This tunnel is quite big enough for engines who don't rock and roll. It took some while to clear away the rocks and set Duncan free again. At last, Scar Lowy was able to push Duncan and his coaches safely through. The guard's van was left on the siding, and the workmen stayed to make sure everything was safe. Duncan grumbled all the way home, but Scar Lowy paid no attention. Later, the fat controller spoke severely to Duncan. Listen to me. There is nothing wrong with that tunnel. You stuck in it because you tried to do rock and roll. Tunnels are not dance floors, and you are not a pop star. The fat controller gave his full attention to Duncan's funnel. If it happens again, he ended ominously. I shall find ways to cut you down to size. In other words, your career is <laughs> on the line. Need I say more? Duncan thought the fat controller had said quite enough, and he remained completely silent and still for at least a whole evening. Scar Lowy, the little engine, loves all the sights and sounds along his line and knows them very well. One morning, soon after he returned from being mended, he was enjoying his journey more than ever before. Along the way, he met Rusty. You know, he said, if I couldn't see these familiar faces and places, I'd think I was on a different railway. You've done wonders with these rails. Rusty laughed. I'm glad you're pleased. Manager said, let's mend the track so well he won't know where he is. And we did. And you didn't, if you take my meaning. Scar Lowy liked this hard-working diesel. There's still one bad bit, warned Rusty. Just before the first station, an engine might come off there, particularly Duncan. He will rock and roll along the line. Look at him right now. I shouldn't like his passengers hurt. What about me? 
I'm a plain speaking engine and I believe in plain speaking. Speak up. Rusty warned Duncan about the bad bit of line. Huh, grunted Duncan. I know my way about. I don't need smelly diesels to tell me what to do. Rusty felt hurt. Duncan banged about the yard, then he clattered crossly to the station. James was already there, waiting for him. You're late, he snapped. I oh, know, said Duncan. It's that smelly diesel's fault. Rusty tries to teach me how to stay on the rails and then goes off leaving me to find my own cultures. You poor engine, sympathised James. I know all about diesels. One crept into our yard and ordered us about. I soon sent him packing. Duncan was filled with admiration. He didn't know that James was boastful and sometimes didn't tell the truth. Send Rusty packing, send Rusty packing, snorted Duncan. He climbed the hill furiously. Well done, boy. Keep it up, encouraged his driver. Soon they were near the first station. Duncan was pleased. Nothing's happened, nothing's happened, silly old diesel. Clever me. And he rocked and he rolled along the line. Steady, boy, checked his driver. But it was too late. So leapers and ballast, I'm off. And he was. I warned him, said Rusty. But all he did was call me names. The little diesel refused to move. I'm ashamed of you, Rusty, said Scarlowey. Think of the passengers, what are they going to do? Oh, I'd forgotten them, yes, of course. We must help the passengers. And Rusty roared into life. Duncan stood sad and solitary. He couldn't rock and roll now. Oh, dear, he thought. Everyone will know how silly I am. The passengers had to get out and help too. They weren't very pleased about that, but worked as hard as they could. They carefully levered Duncan back onto the line. After that, Duncan was extra careful all day. At last, evening came. Rusty, he whispered, thank you for helping. I'm sorry I was rude to you. That's all right, Duncan. I wish all diesels were like you. Let's be friends. Suits me, replied Rusty. We'll mend that bad bit of rail first thing tomorrow. It was winter on the island of Sodor. Peter Sam puffed nervously along the line. His funnel had never been the same since his accident with some trucks. Now the biting wind was trying to blow it away. My funnel feels wobbly, he complained. I wish manager would hurry up with my new one. He says it will be something special. You and your special funnel, laughed the other engines. They were fond of Peter Sam, but his special funnel had become quite a joke. The winter winds grew worse. The rain came too, turning hillside streams into torrents, which threatened to wash the line away. Rusty, the little diesel, worked hard carrying workmen up and down the line. They were removing branches and leaves so water could flow away. But one morning, Rusty's driver brought bad news. There's been a washout near the tunnel. The track bed has been swept away. We must repair the damage immediately.
The important work took longer than expected. As days went by, the weather changed. It became frosty and much colder. The workmen finished at last. Peter Sam was most careful as he took the morning train over the mended piece of track. Soon, he approached the tunnel. It was short and curved, so his driver could not see right through it. Peter Sam was heading for trouble. There's something hanging from the roof, shouted his driver. Peter Sam came out of the tunnel, a different looking engine. He no longer had his funnel. Here's what hit you, Peter Sam, called the guard, and he produced a thick, cold icicle. They set off again, but without his funnel, the journey was very difficult. Then his fireman saw an old drain pipe lying beside the track. We'll use that instead of your funnel. At least it'll help control the smoke. Peter Sam finished his journey with the drain pipe wired to his boiler. The other engines laughed and Sir Handel sang a song about it. Peter Sam said again and again, his new funnel will put us to shame. Went into the tunnel, lost his old funnel, now his famous new funnel's a drain. The teasing continued, until at last the day came when his new funnel arrived. The fat controller proudly presented it. Oh dear, exclaimed Peter Sam, someone squashed it. The fat controller laughed. Don't worry, Peter Sam, this funnel is something special indeed. You'll soon see. Peter Sam's new funnel had special pipes which made puffing much easier. I feel stronger than ever before, he hummed. Even Sir Handel was impressed. I can't understand it. Peter Sam seems to just stroll along the line. He makes work look so easy. The engines don't laugh at Peter Sam's funnel now. They wish they had one like it. Sir Handel is very proud of his big sturdy wheels. They have broad tyres and hold well to the rails, but they are unusual. One day, the other engines wouldn't stop teasing him. Look at his steamroller wheels, they joked. Be quiet, snorted Sir Handel. You're jealous. Don't worry, soothed Peter Sam. The engines all tease me about my special funnel until they learned how useful it is. Did you hear that, Officer Handel? My wheels are special like Peter Sam's funnel. I can go faster than any of you. Scar Lowy had a plan to make Sir Handel see sense. With your grand wheels, Sir Handel, said Scar Lowy, you're just the engine to tackle George. Who's George? That steamroller over there, replied Scar Lowy. Listen. The steamroller was making rude remarks about the engines. Railways are no good, turn them into roads, pull them up, turn them into roads. Railways are no good, turn them into roads, pull them up, turn them into roads. Don't worry, said Sir Handel. Leave him to me, I'll send him packing. George will soon get a run for his money. Later that morning, George was at the level crossing. Huh, he said. You're Sir Handel, I suppose. Sir Handel was standing no nonsense. And you, I suppose, are George, yes. I've heard of you. And I've heard of you. You swank around with your steamroller wheels pretending you're as good as me. Actually, retorted Sir Handel, I'm better. Goodbye. George chuffed on fuming. Later that day, Sir Handel brought a special load down after the last train had gone. 
When he reached the road, he saw George trundling home. Sir Handel tried to attract his attention. Peep, pip, peep. George took no notice. There was barely room to pass. Sir Handel was cross. Get out of my way, you great clumsy road hog. Huh. I don't move for imitation steamrollers, off George. They lumbered along as the insults continued. Then there was trouble. Oh, cried Sir Handel. That was your fault. No, it wasn't. It was yours. Everyone was arguing about who was to blame. Hello, 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 said a policeman ominously. And what's going on here? This made everyone stop arguing. They set to work clearing up the mess instead. Next day, the workmen put up a fence between the road and the railway. Then they went away, taking George with them. Sir Handel thought he had made George go away. He talked of nothing but steamrollers. Oh dear, whispered Scarlowy. He's worse than ever. I'm sorry my plan was no good. Never mind, said Rusty. We'll think of something else. But they had no need to do that. Some boys arrived instead. They pointed to the engine and cried, Look, here's Sir Handel. He tried to race a steamroller. But the steamroller nearly beat him. Sir Handel never mentions steamrollers now. Oh.